And I mean, the, the, we, we, people are talking about very many different aspects of, of climate change uh, around the world. Uh, but I think perhaps it's fair to say that uh, climate change has a more immediate effect on the Pacific region, on the islanders of the Pacific region. Uh, is that the case? Um, I should think so. Uh, these are countries that are already quite exposed and uh, vulnerable to any form of major uh, natural disaster uh, because of their small size, uh, often because of their sea-based locations and isolation. Um, and uh, yes, the, uh, the impacts of climate change are already being felt indeed for quite some time now. In what way are they being felt? Uh, in a host uh, of ways, uh, coastal erosion, uh, infiltration of uh, drinking water and uh, fresh uh, water lenses, uh, more frequent incidences of uh, heavy rain, sometimes droughts, uh, where the obvious interference uh, with what one could describe as seasonal uh, flows or an expectation of weather um, uh, more they seem to be more intense uh, cyclonic activity all this is not unknown because in some ways these have been anticipated uh, from the studies of the intergovernmental panel of climate change and has been predicted for some time I mean, despite that, uh, because of their small size, some of these islands, um, are there voices, are there protests, are there warnings being heard in the wider world where we're perhaps a little bit more protected from the immediate effects of climate change? Well, indeed. I, I, I think small uh, island countries uh, have been negotiating and uh, advocating and been saying these things for near 20 years now. And um, it, 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 we'd, we'd like to feel that uh, all this is being heard. Uh, but uh, I expect that we would need to carry on saying these things. Uh, we cannot give up the necessary advocacy. Um, it's becoming uh, essential in the armament uh, of, the, uh, of speaking out on a global issue at global locations. Uh, a, a good positive development in our part of the world is that the advocacy has been taken up by political leaders themselves. Uh, hitherto it's been uh, carried uh, the voice of uh, concern, the voice of protest, uh, the insistence for international action and cooperation had tended to be voiced by negotiators. Um, uh, who are heard but quickly forgotten. Uh, this is now, as I say, being carried by political leaders themselves. I don't want to be over, overly dramatic, but is it already too late uh, for some of these islands? Are the effects of rising sea levels, I mean, could they potentially wipe out uh, islands? Um, well, it, it, it possibly is, but uh, on the other hand, it, it, uh, it has occurred. Uh, in the sense of, uh, in our part of the world, uh, communities have had to be moved from their uh, islands because they uh, have been overcome by uh, seawater. And governments, national governments, uh, of course, have had to relocate people for their own safety and security. I think that's not widely known. So really the effects of climate change are already being felt in, in, in very vivid terms by the sound of it. Yes, it, it has to be said that this, uh, this has happened to a number of especially low-lying and small um, island communities. Um, uh, I, I have not visited these islands myself and it may be it's been an occasional high tide. Uh, but uh, national governments have to take precaution for the ultimate safety of citizens uh, and it's likely to get worse um, rather than better. I mean, so contingency plans have been made, are being made, what, to, to move whole communities, to move whole islands potentially? Well, uh, without question, it's an existential threat uh, and, and governments will have to take the necessary policy steps uh, to anticipate now. 
uh, somewhat like you, not wishing to be overdramatic about it, uh, it's, it's sensible planning for the future.